Hey, we good here? Good. I'm getting back to work. What's good, you two shoes, everybody? We right back with another one. LA Clippers, Phoenix Suns, game two. Before we get into that, I do want to let y'all know about TubeBuddy, how we've been working with them. There's an affiliate link right below this video in the, in the bio. Definitely click that and install it. Trust me, they're going to help you with your YouTube growth, followers, everything on YouTube, pretty much amped up on steroids. Trust me, you want to hit that, hit that link. Without further ado, we're going to get right into this game, too. What a game it was. What a game, what a game. Defensively, like I said, Ty Lue is not like the coach that's been really showing out to me in these playoffs. Defensively, they made a good adjustment on, uh, on Devin Booker. Did they, or did, did you just have a bad night? No, it was a good adjustment. Mark Jackson uh, pointed it out probably like at the very beginning of the game. Like probably like after like five minutes, six minutes went by. And it was pretty much if he had the ball, because you know, Chris Paul ain't there. So <clears throat> the thing was try to keep him out of his spot. Don't let him get that screen. That high screen? Too close to the three. Yeah, don't let him get that screen too close to the three. Mm -hmm. Keep it far away. That way, he actually has to go a long distance, and your your defense can go can make an adjustment for him. But somebody pointed out perfectly, bro. This Phoenix is it's crazy because Phoenix is really built to score at the basket with Aiden and mid range with Booker and uh, Chris Paul. So you got other people around them that can just hit the three. Like I said, so that's pretty much. So what? Like, bro, like I was saying, I think this is a perfectly built basketball team. And yeah, I think that. It, Go ahead. I question that. I'll question that. I'll, I'll say it is perfectly built right now, but what happens when the Golden States come back and they're just raining threes on your head? And you can't, I mean, y'all can't defend that. No, it can't. Nobody can defend, defend Golden State. So if they, if they match, let's say they matched up this year, mm -hmm. it would be very interesting because let's say Clay wasn't hurt. Uh, they still got their rookie center. It'll be very interesting. It'll be very interesting. Because, like I said, they still got a rookie center. Clay would help them, obviously, a ton as far as uh, workload goes. And he'll be guarding Devin Booker. It'll be a hell of a matchup. It'll be a hell of a matchup. I hope Clay Thompson comes back fully healthy that he's guarding at number one. That's my guy. But when I say a perfect least... basketball team, I oh, yeah, bro, I, I, I agree with you. I agree with you 100%. Clay Thompson coming back as the number one. Uh, I'm saying, does he guard the number one? Like, I'm just oh. hoping that his injury isn't so bad, like bad that he's not able to sit in that chair and guard the number one. Like he I mean, did. Darren, here's the thing. Let's be let's be a hundred. He's going to be guarding the number one. It's the, who, Steph's not guarding the number one. Draymond might. It, it depends Same. on the team. Um, because Draymond's not guarding the guard all night. Yeah, I agree. But, this team is built great, man. They're built great. But what, what I was saying, they, like you said, they have, uh, I think it's perfectly built. I think that DeAndre uh, Ayton uh, draft pick is really paying off huge. I think he might be the best center in the league. We need to start having that conversation. No, we need to start having that conversation. Because the way he's playing in this playoffs right now, he just out he outplayed Anthony Davis. He outplayed the MVP Joker. Anthony Davis is not a center. He, he's a big man. Then they were guarding. And I don't each other. know. I don't know if he outplayed Joker. To be real, I don't think he outplayed Joker. All right, bet. Then he held his own. He didn't have a bad series. Yeah, he definitely held his own. I would definitely say that. Um, outplayed Joker. I think he played right there with Joker. He played. He outplayed Joker at the basket underneath the paint. If you want to say one of the best paint, uh, centers, I, we can we can have that debate. All around, I'm, offense and defense. That's what I'm saying. Look at think about that. that we got that debate. I'm not, I'm not saying like in this, these playoffs he's showing out. My question is, Carl Anthony Towns was healthy this year and on a good team. Are we saying that he's better than him? I don't know the answer. To that. So I actually have a question about Cat after this. But, but remind me to ask you about it. For sure. But uh, I, like I said, bro, I think we need to start having that conversation. 
because and he, he, there's they don't got anybody to really defend him. They got Zubat, but he's way more athletic than homie. Uh, you're not worried about Zubak as a scoring threat. He's definitely an elite center. Aiden is definitely an elite center. But, but right just, now, I didn't expect it to happen this fast. Just saying. Because, uh, oh, let me say it like this. Luka and Trey Young, I was expecting them to be good this this quickly. I good as quickly as they were. Let alone Aiden. I thought Aiden was going to be... It was going to take like four... It was going to take like out of his rookie contract. That first year out of his rookie contract... That was gonna be his crazy year, bro. You crazy? <laughs> and it was—it's gonna be a like, no, Darren. I did not think he was gonna be this good this quickly. You're disrespectful, Darren. He's one of the best sitters in the league. Is this his third year? This is the third. He year? got drafted in the same year, Luca and Trace. It's, they got drafted. So, this is third year, 2018. So he, this—he's good. He's supposed to be this good. He's the number one pick. No, not this quick. I thought, I thought he was a project piece. Like a project number one. You just don't pass up on that type of center. Because you don't see that type of center in the league anymore. No, no. If you watched DeAndre Ayton in the, while he was in college, you I knew did. he was a worker. Oh, okay. Well, you knew he was a worker. If you watched him, you knew he was a worker and he manned the paint. It was just he needed more workers around him. Devin Booker is obviously great, but the Crowder move, the Chris Paul move, he needed those vets around him that – put in that exact same work so he just knows his job you know what i mean like if you see other people putting in that work and they just tell you to do your job you're going to do it to the best of your ability just because you know that's what they're going to give you from where they're at now i just feel like that was always eight and stank he just needed veterans around but do you hear what i'm saying about him developing so quickly and how these guys are developing so quickly Trey Young, in my opinion, is about to be in the conference finals. Uh, I, my opinion. Trey Young is about to be in the conference finals. Uh, Luka, we know what Luka is. We think Luka is the future of the league. And DeAndre Ayton, he's the future center of this league. I'm just saying, though. These, I've been saying this Offensively for a while. Offensively and These young guys are coming into the league just better. They're coming into the league better. Look. Well, People, but here's the people thing, didn't though. have Donovan Mitchell winning Rookie of the Year when he won it. That, I mean, before he won it. We all thought that was going to, like, Ben Simmons or something. I see what you're saying, Darren. But I, I, I agree with you that, with that statement. But if, if you think about the class, the generation, not the generation, the, the guys that came out before them, like three, four years before them, D'Angelo Russell, uh, Victor Oladipo, those type of guys, it took them some time. It took them, like, three or four years. So for the for these guys, DeAndre hold and Luca, Trey Young. Hold up, time out, time out, time out. This is the end of the game. Let's let's cover. It. Yeah, pause this. At least pause it. To have it, pause it just to have this conversation real quick. I see what you're saying. I hundred percent see what you're saying. But I, to me, it's the difference of what did you do before, like. Uh, Luca, Luca played overseas, right? Yeah. He was going to be good. We knew he was going to be good. We knew he was going to be good pretty quick, too. Uh, who else was it? Uh, LaMelo, he played over. Oh, okay. Yeah, Keep going. Before I LaMelo. get to LaMelo, he played overseas. Everybody talks about LaMelo's work ethic with basketball. Just be, That's the ball is life for those brothers. So well, before, everybody, you, before you go with that, go everybody, I think everybody under the age of 25 thought LaMelo was going to be good. Everybody I think if you're under the age of 25, uh, I think you thought LaMelo was going to be good. Just like off the internet alone. Yeah, but that was work. He puts in the work. Yeah, yeah. Okay, that's where we're going with that. Yeah. So here's, I guess my biggest thing is... He's been is, putting in the work, yeah. Yeah, DeAndre Ayton too, bro. He's just been putting in work. He's had three years, bro. He's just been putting in work. They just put in work. Luca put in work. Trey Young, Trey Young is probably my... Like, if we're just talking about developing right now, Trey Young is probably my favorite as a develop, like who how, how he has developed, because really? yes, honestly yes, because we really thought he was just gonna be a shooter in the league, a three point shooter who was a point guard, but his bro he's he's a yeah people he thought really he was gonna come in the league and start offense. chucking, exactly, but he really runs that offense. He he but, like bro, the, I told you the, the stat that got me this year for him mm -hmm. was he was either number two or number three 
behind Westbrook in assists at the end of the year. He's That's good. when I was like, oh, I was like, yeah, this guy is. If he's leading his team, then what can I like? To me, he he has the most. De- he, he since he's entered the league, most development that I'm like, yeah. If we're just talking about that draft, if we're talking about Aiton, Luca, and uh, Trey Young, I don't know who else was all in that draft. But well, th- those are the big. Those are the big three. Um, I, I mean, that's who, I'm, that's who I'm most impressed. That's who I'm most impressed with. Don't get me wrong. It's just Aiton is doing what I've seen him do in college. He's just doing it on a professional level now. And he last night he showed me that he got that uh, mid range shot. So if you try to just back up off of him. He got it. He just got that quick mid-range shot. So, he's a problem. I think he went 12 for 15 last night. I don't know. Oh, I, anyway. I, I see him as a... But he, my thing is, when you... He's a... He's a he's kind of a dinosaur, low-key. He's kind of a baby dinosaur in, like, the Ice Age. When I, when I say that, he's a throwback center. He's a throwback center that can uh, post you up, old school, and back you down. Uh, he's big. He's a shot blocker. He's a rim defender. And he's athletic mm-hmm. enough to stay with anybody in this modern age. All these athletic three-pointing sh- uh, shooting fours, he can stay with any of those guys. He can guard this them, is too. A, this is kind of an early uh, comparison. and Probably really early comparison. He reminds me of the Admiral, David uh, David Robinson. Admiral? Yeah, his body type, how how much of a presence in the paint he really is. That's kind of he, how he, who he reminds me of. So here's the thing about me and David Robinson. I'm mm-hmm. low key too young for David Robinson because by but by the time I was a big I remember I grew up on Tim Duncan. My dad and my mom were big on big on Tim Duncan, so I know who Tim Duncan was. So by the time Tim Duncan came in the league, I'm pretty sure they won his rookie year. When Tim Duncan came in the league, what 96, 97, they won the championship that year. Uh, he was already old back then, so I really haven't didn't see that dude play. The only time, the biggest memory I have of the, uh, of the Admiral is from like the Like Mike movie when uh, Little Bow was like, Admiral, Admiral. I don't but, remember that scene for some reason. So I haven't seen that movie in so long, though. I don't know. But uh, I but, just want to throw that out there. Yeah, for sure. But getting back to this game, though, can we back this up a little bit? Because we, we got to get to the controversial part. We just talked right over it. Oh, these dudes didn't score for like the defense was stepped up. They neither team could score down the stretch. Mm, oh yeah, yeah. One thing I can say though, referee and dog. Good God, this game went on forever. That was ridiculous. Three-hour game, bro. I, I fell asleep half. Like I'm like this. Like oh my goodness, I, bro. I could not. I was trying to stay awake. Bro, I, I started up. editing. I started working on the thumbnail. <laughs> I was up, but I was sitting here like, bro, how, like, how is it still being you? They were like, uh, I think they said the last 90 seconds of the game took 30 minutes, 33 minutes yeah. or something like that. Over stupid stops. Yeah, the last one was the one. That's that the play of the game. That boy bad for that. Yeah. Oh, no. This boy, I, as soon as he jumped up in the air, I was like, yeah, this is but I did like the fact that Paul George and uh, Devin Booker, they were just going at it with these buckets for the last... It felt good. But this, man, pause. This shit. Did you think he's on a... Uh, did you think he was on miss both? No, bro. When he missed the first one, I was like, dog, he is in trouble. I knew he was in trouble after he missed the first one. I was like, even exactly what I said out loud. I was like, bro, there's no way that you missed the second one. I think There's no way that you could possibly miss it. I'm pretty sure, like, at least a minute or two before this happened... Uh, I texted you, Devin Booker game mm-hmm. winner, Devin Booker yep. game winner. I'm calling it, and this nigga missed both shots. I was like, shit, that's yeah, tough. I, I was, I was surprised, man, because to me, they can defend the three well. You know, the Clippers can defend the three pretty well. That's kind of how they made it out of the last series. But defending a two point play, different story, man. But yeah, Paul George got to make those. Let's we can keep going, but Paul George got to make those. He he played so good in the fourth quarter until then. All right, let me say something about this play. This is out on Aiden. No, it's not. That was out on Aiden, bro. No, it's not. Hold on. Oh, after doing a half an hour of reviewing, I get it, but that was out on Aiden to me. 
Wait, 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 so what are you saying then? What do you mean after I doing thought a half was an hour? What do you I mean, mean by that? Like, are you saying just because they took so long, you understand why they why they got it right? Or are you just saying it should have been a play, it should have been an instant call, and it was it should have been out by eight because it just looked like it? Is that what you're saying? I thought it was out in eight. That's all I could say. And then they took forever. While it was taking forever, I was dozing off. So to me, I don't even. I didn't even get a clear, like, look at it to say uh, for sure. You know, like. I don't know. I don't even, uh, maybe, maybe I was really dozing off, but I don't remember them zooming in on this. I don't think they zoomed in on it. They, look, they reviewed it for too long for not to let the fans watch what happened. All right, that might be Terrence, man. Yeah. Yeah. Look, man, that, that's terrible. Cause I really thought that was out of me. Actually, bro, if he doesn't even touch the ball right there, there's a good chance Aiden just gets it back, and all you got to do is go like this and hope. Oh, I, I <laughs> almost forgot about this shit. I'm glad. I'm glad we we watched this shit. I almost forgot about this shit. Hold on, let me. Yeah. So. The Clippers this... are some cheating ass niggas. What? You see these niggas try to cheat? So when you, uh, they didn't have any timeouts left. So yeah. they're supposed to just get right on the court and just play. They try to switch out their whole fucking team. That was And try to play. get DeMarcus Cousins out. They try to get Zubak out. And they try to get uh, him out. I forget his name. Batum out. I think, I think they this They get Rich after, Jackson in there. I think this was after this play. Okay, you're right. You're right, actually. Yeah, it was after this play. But, um... But there's first some cheating ass niggas for that. They are, they really are. Uh, first things first. Let me say this. Monty Williams, what a great play call. Coach of the <laughs> year. Real. Stop playing with me. Look, I think this is. If this he's not coach of the year now, I, I don't know, bro. That's a hell of a play call. That's what some 2K shit. Series, I'll call that in 2K. Now, nah, what makes this series so good, truly, besides the obvious Devin Booker, Paul George. And everything else, you know, I don't got to go into every player. It's the coaching of Ty Lue versus Monty Williams. This is chess at its finest. Because Ty Lue, his past two series went down 0-2, came back and won the series. He's here. He's down 0-2 right now. And this is just going to be a chess match going forward. Because Monty Williams, for this last play call, I knew for a fact it was going to one of the guards. I knew for a fact it was going to one of the guards. And for it to be this... Kind of, I don't know. It's just kind of crazy. Like I said, Darren, this is the shit I, second, I called in 2K. I don't, I don't, yeah. I wouldn't call this shit in a game. I've seen it in 2K. But uh, the second thing, Crowder, dog, what an amazing throw. Like, it was perfect. the backboard is right there. It was and a perfect throw. Every, then the screen from uh, Devin Booker is great. But let's go ahead. I'm, I'm sitting here playing the whole play out. Let's go. To inbound with that big body in front of you. Such a perfect pass. As soon as as soon as it happened, I was like, "Oh, he got that! I can't believe he got." That. But like you said, bro, like you said, it's a chess match. But here's the thing: if you know, if anybody knows anything about chess, the uh, I think uh, um, I think the Suns have a queen. I don't think the 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 Clippers don't have their queen. He's in LA. It's saying he there's a chance that he'll still come come back in this uh this series. But all I'm saying is when you're playing with no queen on the board, it, it's a, it's a, it's tough. It's a very tough. And the other person has theirs, and they're. But I will say this in their defense, while we're since we're on that analogy, um, the Clippers did defend them very well. He had that big Clippers shot down the uh, down the line, but they they had a really good game o overall. Clippers. It's kind of sad that it was just a tough loss. That's just a tough loss. The Clippers, and I know this is going to sound crazy because they got their talented team, but the stat going into the playoffs for them was they melt they're melting down in the last six minutes of the game, five minutes of the game. And what I will tell you is that is don't mean nothing now like it was a regular season thing that they were just losing those games in the last five minutes now 
they have surprised me. The Maverick series, I was like, okay, you know what? Like, Luca had to do it all itself, whatever. The last series, I'm like, all right, they don't got nobody else that can get their own shot like like Donovan Mitchell, but they got the shooters everywhere. But to come down 0-2 in both of those series and then come back and win it, and now you're actually hanging with the Suns. And everybody knows the Suns is the hottest team right now. But they're hanging, you're hanging with them, and you don't, you're doing it without Kawhi. Like if Kawhi is here from one of these games, you still just, I think you still at least one of those games. Yeah, because Kawhi's a is it's that's so. I've, I've, how many games have you seen Kawhi just be like cold and just like bad? It's rare. It's yeah. Rare. One thing I can say though, if if Kawhi comes back, this whole series can flip. Easy. If he comes back healthy, this series comes back and flip. Like even if Paul, uh, Chris Paul is there, it comes back and flips because they don't have no one. You could put Bridges on him, but I don't know who you got. Who you? Who's Here's what I would do. Uh, Paul you George. Put, you put Kawhi on Devin Booker and say, hey, do your best to take this nigga out the game. And you say, mm-hmm. have put Paul George play some type of, like, free safety role. Paul George play free safety? They might they might start running niggas out the gym. Shit, shit might be looking scary in uh – and uh, this this is this is gonna be a this is gonna be a crazy Western Conference Finals. Let's just uh, wrap it up with this. Who you got going? Who you got uh, winning Game Three? This it still sounds like a tough pick, but I really have the uh, Phoenix winning Game Three. They come in and stun them. Because I think I think I really feel like uh, Devin Booker is that type of player, and I think Monty Williams is that type of coach to go in there. Going to your home court, take the first game. They got to get one of them. I think they're going to win one of those games. Uh, yeah, let's just—I'm gonna get that off the table. I think they're going to win one of them, either game three or game four. I don't know which one. They got to win one, and I think they're going think to win Clippers. one. I think get, I think Clippers get game three, and uh, I think Chris Paul is back there, back with uh, the Suns at that time. Oh, I think no. he's going. No, I, think, I disagree strongly. No, with them. Well, yeah. Well, let me finish my let me finish my take. I think Chris Paul comes back. Healthy, obviously, it was just, you know, COVID or whatever. I, I was not just saying just COVID. If he got COVID, I don't think he got it though. Uh, no, nah, he said to go through the COVID protocols. He just had to, yeah. Okay, so I think when he comes back, they'll put Patrick Beverly to start on him, and that is going to straight up piss him off. If you put Patrick Beverly and Rondo against Chris Paul. I think it frustrates him on his first couple games back, and I think that's how the Clippers get their first get their first game. I think a frustrated, rusty Chris Paul with uh, Rondo and uh, Patrick Beverly defending him. But I also will say, I think uh, Ty Lue will make an adjustment in that starting lineup, whether it's Zubac sitting and uh, DeMarcus Cousins starting, mm-hmm. or DeMarcus Cousins getting more tick. It will have to be something, though. And look, bro, yeah. Devin Booker didn't even have a great game last night, bro. Yeah, he didn't. He didn't. He was kind of cold most of the night. And like you said, they, they started to fit him differently. Which is smart because I want to see somebody do, throw a different look at Devin Booker. They did. I've been, I've been waiting did. for that all playoffs because I don't think anybody has. Tell me if I'm wrong. They've been running that high screen roll since the Lakers series. Yeah, it's just hard to stop. Oh, uh, man. Yeah, Cameron Payne is – you can't let Cameron Payne do that to you, dog. He was getting to the – bro, so I was actually looking at him. I, I, hopefully, I'm not getting him mixed up with Mikel Bridges. But that boy has really long arms for his body. I think he has, like, a – you know how your wingspan is supposed to be the exact same length as, like, your height? I think he's one of those freak people – yeah, I learned that I learned that in, like, middle school or something. It's supposed to be the exact same. It's supposed to be the exact same. Some people are freaks, though, and their wingspan is, is just, like, extra long. I think his wings have been extra long because his arms look really long. He was getting to the basket at will, and he was like using his arms just to, like to get to get his arms up. So it was like an extra extension on being in the defender. So you could be like right on his hip, but he has a little bit extra reach to get to the to the basket. I think I think Cameron Prem is a problem for years to come. He's about to get paid off this uh, playoff run too. He's about to get paid crazy. Yeah. He's going to get paid, but I think – I don't know. Actually, I don't know if he gets paid. I think he's a backup in this league no matter what. But he's a he's a backup that you want, and I can tell you that. Um, What's really the question is we, – we're going to start a new video because the Chris Paul is really the question. 
Does Chris Paul say he wants to find a new deal instead of staying with uh, the Suns for? Well, he's not sure if he's going to stay with the Suns, but he wants to sign a new deal. What the hell? How was this game close? Zubak, 14 points. Four for... Zubak, what are you doing? Play more aggressively. If you're four for five, you need to make eight and work. Keep going at him. And he was getting his ass busted on defense. You gotta make I, him work. You can't say that, Darren, because they're not they're not passing any of the ball to post up, or they're they're only passing. He's only getting the ball probably off of rebounds and maybe putbacks and shit. That's what probably most Coach. of those points. I guarantee it. Maybe like Coach two of those Lewis. are like pick and roll. Well, he was just ask, act of asking the passes. Coach Lou is gonna make an adjustment because you gotta tire out Aiden. But yeah, we can we can go ahead and wrap this up. Paul oh, George gotta do better from the three. One for eight. Good God. And the first one came in the fourth quarter, too. It's harder to shoot in the playoffs. It really is. It's harder to shoot. Not free throws. Man, five for Look, ten is terrible. Oh, George better have a big game in L.A., bro. He has to. Where's my, where's my boy Terrence Mann at? Eight points. Good God. You too, bro. Be aggressive. Be aggressive, my niggas. Come on, y'all. Terrence Mann, be aggressive. Zubak, be aggressive. Marcus Cousins, I don't know what. How, how do you feel with the Morris brothers? Somebody said it perfect. The more uh, for this Morris brother, this team goes with the way he goes. So if he's not doing good, they will lose the game. Oh, is that thing? It's kind of weird. Yeah, like last game, he was like zero for five or something. Damn, they lost the game. Yeah, but it was. It's not like they're losing by a lot. They just go with him. But for him to be getting so much tick. He needs to knock down more of those shots. He needs to knock down three more of those shots if you take taking 11. Two more of those shots. Three more of those shots. All right. Well, thank you all once again for uh, checking out the video. Make sure you like and subscribe down below. Also, make sure you check us out on social media. We're on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. Also, me and uh, you see these dope black hoodies me and Darren are wearing? You can go check, find these on inspiredbybishoppro.com. Uh, say Rob sent you. Uh, all right. Peace, y'all. We see y'all next time. Peace. Y'all stay up. From small to triple XL, all inspired by ambition gear at Inspired by Ambition Pro.